All right, let's talk about Desmond Ritter. Uh, excited for next week. Excited for uh, us. By the way, we've told you, but we'll continue to mention this, that uh, the morning shift, Steakhouse, Andy and Randy, they'll all be at training camp, those open days. If you're making your way up there, you may run into us. We'll be up there as well, but we're actually doing our show at Hooters Mall of Georgia, and we're doing it 27th. 28th, which is next Thursday and Friday, and then the following week. So plenty of days for you guys to come out and hang out with us. But Desmond Ritter made the round yesterday. He was on NFL Live. He was also on SportsCenter. And he talked about going into camp as quarterback number one. Yeah, for me, you know, it's just, uh, you know, I know what the season is going to be like. I know what it's going to hold, how long it is. Um, and then obviously, you know, you talk about the offense. I have, you know, a whole year of offense under my belt. Um, and so, you know, I'm excited to get back in the building with the guys. Um, and get going and just, you know, try to reach our ultimate goal. So it is different because last year it was we knew going in he was going to back up Marcus Mariota. We kept thinking at some point he was going to get a shot. Maybe earlier in the season it didn't happen. But it's different when it's your job. It's different when you report and this is your team. So I'm curious to see, you know, how that goes for him. Mike, everybody talks about his leadership. I think he's going to be fine. I think he's going to be fine. Well, you, you got to get better pieces around you than last year. We only had a small sample size. We get like, it is what it is. But now you got a much better line. If Bergeron wins that left guard job, we talked about him yesterday, which rookie is going to have the impact, how Bijan and how the, the game played. And how, again, you know, how much of this is going to be different from last year because of the pieces around you? I think he can adapt. Arthur Smith always tells us how much this guy is is sharp and picks things up. But just a matter of executing, Carl. And, man, you've got – if everything's clicking like we think it should, it shouldn't be. It's not like you need him to be Joe Montana, put right. it that way. Yeah, I agree. I don't, you don't, you don't need to be perfect. Right. But uh, Desmond Ritter talked about putting in the work with Pitts and Drake this offseason. Listen to yeah, this. Yeah, for me, and obviously, you know, Drake and I had a great connection last year. Um, and for myself and Kyle, you know, we didn't get as many reps as we liked to last year. Um, so for me, it was just about, you know, keep developing that relationship with Drake and then obviously, um, you know, build that relationship with Kyle on that, you know, whether it's, whether it's playing golf on the weekends or, or you know, actually being out there and working and, and working on our crafts together um, and just growing that connection both on and off the field. I think it's important. Um, we talked about this with Matt Ryan and the receivers he's had over the years. It's no different, guys. And, and, and you know, it's up to these guys to put in the work and have that connection. Sort of like, I just know where you're going to be, and I trust you, right? And Matt had that with Tony Gonzalez when he got here, and, and you know, third and six, we knew where the ball was going, and he was going to catch it. Yeah, I mean, and we talked about, like, the great – remember, you and I would argue about the great quarterback-wide receiver combinations like Marvin Harrison and Peyton – you know, Marino and Duper and all yeah. that and Clayton. But just Julio in the red zone with Matt were not exactly what we probably thought we were going to get at the end of the day. But this is where I think Pitts and Drake in the red zone can't wait to see this team. Let's hope we're not settling for field goals, and I don't think we're going to be this year. I don't either. I think we're scoring a lot more points. Right, Art? We're going to score more points? <laughs> it's Dukes and Bell, Sports Radio 92.9 The Game. I mean, obviously, we need to score more points. Exactly. About, about, four, about 4.5 a game. Desmond Ritter was also talking about Bijan Robinson. What did he say about uh, the Falcons' newest uh, weapon? Yeah, just his explosiveness. I mean, you know, you obviously see it, you know, on, the, on his film from Texas. Um, but just seeing it in person, you know, we haven't got the pads on yet. So uh, we'll see what it's like when we get the pads on. But, you know, just being out there during OTAs. Uh, just ability to to be able to play anywhere and do anything, uh, you know, is just really huge. Yeah, I, again, I, I I will say this probably to my blue in the face, if that's possible. Mm -hmm. uh, you are going to be pleasantly surprised with the production and what we get from B. John Robinson. I just, and everybody, if anybody's doubting this, this is not, we're not, I'm not overhyping this because you, you have Texas right. guy. None of that. This guy is really stinking good. Yeah, I mean, I just don't know how much you don't know about him. I mean, you can go just Google B. John Robinson Texas highlights, and I think you'll be impressed if you didn't watch it last year. The dude is, again, when you consider, like, and we don't want to put extra hype on it. We were talking about some of the, the running backs because the, the running back position being devalued, running backs all coming to each other's aid about how they're getting screwed with contracts right now. But you still need them. And we just we did a list yesterday near the end of the show, Carl, of like 10, 10 guys that were impactful within the last you know 15 years. So you're telling me if you could draft an Adrian Peterson or a LaDainian Tomlinson type player, you'd it. say, oh, no, 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 no. You don't draft that guy in the top 10. There's, oh, really? There's not a team, Mike, that wouldn't go back and draft Marshall Falk right now. Right. If you had to do it. Or LT. I mean, they just they, they wouldn't do they, like you think rethink the draft. You know, after we do drafts, right? Everybody goes back and goes, "All right, if you had to do this draft again, what would it look like?" I'm telling you, once you see these guys for for a decade and how right. dominant they are, you go, "Oh yeah, I take him." But you know, I will say this: I'm not. I hate playing devil's advocate. I certainly don't like to advocate for the owners. But Barkley had injuries. It's not cut and dry. 
And he, like, he does stir the drink. You're not going anywhere without him. And then Pollard, let's be honest, he was in Ezekiel Elliott's shadow until he emerged. Yeah. But he doesn't, have like, he doesn't have like that resume that would say, it's just like, okay, done deal. We're going to throw the Briggs truck at you. Yeah, it, well, Pollard, I didn't believe, had as big a case right. as Josh Jacobs, who led the league in rushing. Total yards, too, by the way. Over 2,000 total yards. And the mm-hmm. and the the case that that Saquon Barkley could could put up, I didn't think they that he had that similar case, but it played out that way. It's Dukes and Bell, guys. One more thing from Desmond Ritter talking about being here for a long time. Mike, you said this: if we or he plays well, we got our franchise guy, and now we can continue to build around him, right? Because again, where he was drafted, we're going to be in great shape to go get other pieces. But he says he'd like to be here for a decade, and I hope that's true. Because I'm the guy that, you know, is going to go out there and lead the team. Um, you know, I'm going to work hard and do everything that I can to make sure that not only my success, my, myself, um, but everyone around me is successful. Um, you know, I just want to bring everyone around me up um, and go out there and do everything that I can to lead the team to victory. Right on. And uh, now we got to go get to work, baby. We've been talking about this guy. Some dudes, Carl, they went out and they bought the four. Then they bought the nine. These guys are ready. They got the Ritter jerseys. <laughs> I mean, they are in. You get some other guys that are like, I got to see it to believe it. And you've got other guys going, we should have moved up and draft Grant Bryce Young. Either that's, way. That's, that's ridiculous. Well, that's, I'm, just, <laughs> I'm just telling you how it is, man. It's Atlanta. Nobody's ever on the same page when it comes to the QB. Uh, all right, 404-726-0929. You guys can always hit us up. Um, it's good to see our quarterback. We're talking about my quarterback. Get some exposure, being in the limelight, and being able to to help, you know, build this brand, that that this new Falcon team, whatever it's going to be, Mike. I just want to be excited about the offense. I, I want to be excited about this team. And we said this for 15 years at some point. I don't know what, what point it was for you. For some, it was eight years. Some, it was 10. Some, it was right at the end. But the fatigue of Matt being here, right. th- we needed a change. And now we're getting it. I don't even consider last year, Mike, to be the change that we thought. No, because it was it was the last year of having no money. It was the last year of – and that's why, you know – I get it. There's some guys who simply look at the record and go, I can't believe you guys are psyched about 7-10. and 10. I just think other coaches wouldn't be able to get to four wins or five wins with this product. Now you finally got the pieces plugged in. Guys, it's never talked about because it's not something you'd look at in a Madden game. But in the trenches, offensive, defensive line, Carl, they got more depth than they've had. Literally, you got to go back six years. It's true. And, and that would be the Super Bowl. So let's go see what we can do. Now, the only, But again, I, I also don't want to crown Desmond Ritter because he's got to go out there and prove it because I still don't know what he is. And we've made the case that he's going to be surrounded with really good pieces. So it isn't, as we said earlier, it doesn't have to be Joe Montana. But I can't tell the listeners right now, I know definitively Desmond Ritter's going to be the man either. He can't. I don't think anybody should. Right. Hopefully it works out, man. Mm-hmm. Uh, we will be up there at camp again covering like nobody's business here on Sports Radio 92.9 The Game.